Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh, I thought I heard an echo, but I'm probably mistaken. There shouldn't be echoes on the beach. But there's a lot of noise here. The sound of the waves, the roaring wind. Noise is omnipresent. Even if you live in a very quiet environment, Just listen carefully enough and you'll hear noise. Technically speaking, noise is a random signal. Just take a sequence of random numbers and convert these random numbers to a sound curve. The zero line of this curve is just between the digits 4 and 5. The first digit is a 5, resulting in the first rather small bar of the bar plot, just pointing a little bit above the zero line. The second digit is a 9, giving rise to a high bar, followed by a 2, resulting in a bar pointing downwards from the zero line, and so on. This does not yet look like a sound curve. But if you use a line plot instead of a bar graph, it looks more like a sound curve. It's just the same data plotted either as a bar graph or as a sound curve. This curve is yet incomplete. It shows only about 40 digits. But let us imagine a curve showing hundred or thousand or even more digits. And if you play such a curve through your loudspeakers or even better headphones, you will hear noise. It is called white noise because it contains all audible frequencies at equal strength, just as white light contains all visible frequencies at equal strength. White noise sounds just like the noise that you could record from a water faucet. The white noise samples I've been playing to you represent a very special white noise. That is so because the random numbers I've used to generate it are also very special. Let us get back to the first 40 digits. Look at them. Do you recognize them? <laughs> okay, I'll give you another four digits. It's the start of the number. Look to the left hand. Now it's clear. These are the decimal digits of the famous number pi. So this noise could be called pi noise. Now you know it was not just any kind of noise, but an auditory representation of the very famous number pi. Listen once more to it, attentively. There are other famous numbers in mathematics that feature a pseudo-random distribution of the decimal digits. Take, for instance, the famous Euler number, E. It can also be translated into a sound curve and played as a sound. Does it sound different? from the sound of pi? The mathematical numbers e and pi are very different. 
their decimal digit sequences are totally uncorrelated with each other. Look at the black and the blue curve. They have nothing in common. However, the sound curve that represents the digital sequences of E and Pi if played through loudspeakers sound really similar. One could not tell them apart just by listening or remember the sound of Pi or the sound of E. Or could you? If you think you could, then tell me which one I'm playing now. In spite of what I've said just before, there is a possible way to tell the sound sequence of E and Pi apart. There is a way to remember the sound of Pi. The problem with noise is that it is so transient, so evanescent. So in order to detect acoustic characteristics or traits of a single noise sample, one has to repeat it again and again. Listen to this cycle of the digits of the number pi. I took the first 20,000 digits and played them over and over again. I suppose you heard the rhythmical structure within this piece of noise. This was not due to rhythmically reoccurring cut artifacts because I cut noise and added it to itself. If you cut noise and add it to itself, there is no cut artifact. What you heard were random fluctuations within this specific piece of noise and they differ from noise segment to noise segment. Listen again to this periodically repeated piece of pi noise. And compare it to a periodically repeated piece of Euler noise. With some practice you could learn to tell them apart. This is due to our auditory sensory memory, also called echoic memory, echoic memory, echoic memory. Just like a real echo would give you the chance to listen again to the sound sequences is being echoed, echoic memory gives you a chance to focus on these very subtle variations. Here you see the spectrogram of noise. The first part non-periodic, then periodic. Let's listen to it. The differences are really subtle, auditorily as well as visually. We have used periodic white noise to study echoic memory. But there are many other random signals where echoic memory can prove its strength. Here we see the waveform of a so-called wavelet. It is a sinusoidal signal covered by a Gaussian envelope. The width of this envelope is about two cycles of the sinusoid. The lower graph shows a spectrogram of this wavelet and now listen to it. This is another wavelet with a different frequency. Now imagine that we listen to a sequence of many such wavelets dropping in at random times and with random frequencies. By 
using such random stimuli, neurophysiologists have identified the spectrotemporal receptive fields of nerve cells in the primary auditory cortex of awake non-human primates. It is our primary auditory cortex that detects repetitions of such random sound sequences. And when a defined noise segment is repeated over and over again, some of these random fluctuations become strikingly audible. It seems that it is easier for us to detect the cause structures or patterns represented in random wavelet sequences than the finer structures or patterns represented in the random fluctuations of white noise. Random wavelet sequences are not the only auditory random signal where our echoic memory can detect repetitions. Here is another stimulus of interest, random spike sequences. Let's listen to this sound. Random spike sounds just like tearing paper. When you tear a piece of paper, different fibers will break at different random time points. Again, when a part of this random sequence of spikes is repeated periodically, our echoic memory will detect this immediately. It is interesting to note that there is a seamless transition between these two types of stimuli. As the average number of spikes per second increases, the noise of the random spikes becomes more and more similar to white noise. This is also true for our random wavelets. There is a lot of research on human performance in processing repeated sequences of white noise. It would be interesting to study human performance in processing other repeated sequences of random stimuli. Noise is a sound of life. If we want to understand how we perceive the world, we should study noise.